All right, let's get into this. Uh, this is winners finals uh, against New York at Champs. Optic Texas gonna have a chance to try to jump into the hard point first. Keep your eye on Shotzi, looking to get those aggressive routes early and often. First point. All right, so decent break off the start. We get the the top uh, AC kill or top. We would call it top plat. A lot of people call it top AC. We call it top plat. Top plat kill. Uh, they actually send Paco on the, on the full flank right at the start. He's going to go underneath to try and flank the top third guy. Uh, but that leaves us really open to winning gunfights on the hill. So Brandon is our top three player. He gets a kill AC. We see last guy alive that's actually pushing. Uh, we know obviously two are alive, uh, but we know one's on the point. We can focus this guy on the point. Last guy alive, we don't know where he is, but it's Paco. And we're assuming since he hasn't hit anything yet, he went for some type of uh, pinch like top three. So that's why Brandon turns around, but it's not fast enough and Paco's able to kill him. So unfortunately, you know, he does die there. We're not soaking the time. Uh, but from this side, it's still a, you know, decent break for the non-favorable side. But with all of that going down, because Brandon dies on the hill, because, you know, AG dies there, since they're refilling faster than us, um, they, they are like holding time, which isn't, you know, the best. It's just because Paco had made that play and we didn't read him uh, right away. Like if, if Brandon instantly reads him flanking top third, we were probably holding time there. Kenny looking at a different route, trying to play over towards Bridgeside. Skies in his way. A couple of tags here and there, but New York. So there's only 20 seconds left. We're we're trying to just break on into this old time. A lot of times, you're just trying to get this left side, you know, street control, and then go into the actual, you know, hill to break on in. The thing with that is though, is you know, at this moment, they're going to be sending more people this side of the map, anyways. So you should be having like not many fights towards old. Uh, so you should be able to get this time and then have some sort of breaking scenario this way. Uh, so let's see how they, they do in order to hold this. Kismet, ratty corner, and unfortunately doesn't check that specific corner that time. And that leaves Simp and who is it? No, Simp. What am I saying? Sib. Sib and Paco to teamwork off old. Because they know the furthest guy pushed up for us on the rotation was Ant and they kill him, they can now focus their attention more on uh, this old time. And that's what, you know, Sib is able to do here. He's able to help Paco. They get two down. They know we're spawning back B3. So this is a really, really bad rotation for us because they have P2. They know where we're spawning. We're spawning super deep. And this is just a very, just very bad scenario in general. They're, they're able to get fully pushed up. The kids is already pushed into like past our red. Now they get those kills and look at where, look at where Kiz spawns. Even though he died here, he's still able to spawn back up and get back to the hill before he, we're even able to exit out of ticket. This just all stems from a pretty bad end of the P1. And now we're just super staggered push like Brandon dies to a nade here while trying to break. Kiz gets a two-piece with Ken. Now we're even more staggered. Last guy alive for us is top plat. You know, we're trying to make something out of basically nothing from the rotation. And that's what was really bad in, in terms of just P2s in general. Like, if you had a bad end of the P1, P2s could be really, really awkward. And, you know, especially because we, we weren't able to get Ant through when he was pushing through Ticket, because obviously Kismet cl cleared him in the, the corner here. It just stemmed to a really bad situation. And now they flip. They know we're spawning towards P4, back alley over here, whatever. And they themselves are going to be spawning in this area. And they can now either choose to help old or work these side lanes and make sure that they cover any new rotation. And with a 61, or sorry, 6 to 51 lead, this is a, a super, super bad scenario. If you're New York, just comes down to receiving this hit around the back. So what do you do here? You're six to fifty-five. You either have the choice, bang old, make sure you get this time because they're gonna be trying to both, you know, keep these spawns and maybe filter in through these other lanes trying to keep you away from rotating, or you just rotate yourselves. But with this type of you know scenario, 30 seconds 
you probably just have to bang old just to make sure you have something on time because if you don't bang old and you lose this rotation you're down even further plus you have to worry about this guy off of old you know making your life miserable off off like pinching off old so uh you kind of just have to hit old in this area especially with where our arrows are at this point so we get skies off old they still are playing a few guys towards here just to you know relieve pressure on the guy that was you know holding old which was skies but we're able to get some of these kills which is really big so it's a really big 20 but again they're going to still have the rotation to next but what the the big thing here is three down we're starting to push out this is really bad for them so them dying like that kind of is is scam but they they actually end up spawning here regardless you know Based on how the kill timing worked, uh, it was possible for them to like spawn back here and, and then, you know, technically they get parallels with someone over here and we capture the spawn. But I think because we weren't deep enough, like we were we were towards junk here, but we weren't towards P3. But it got sketchy for them for sure. So we hold off old, you know, still not the best scenario because we're not actually getting ahead. We still have to break another hill. Doesn't matter when you have those guarantee spawns at the next hill. Paco is a big one on the left side. If Ken wins this one, it creates a big distraction for us while we're trying to break through like the, the old side. They get another kill. Bricks. Not bricks. They get, dude, it's been way too long. It's been a minute since we've scrimmed or played. They get another kill top red. Ken spawns and gets spawn killed. Because of the spawn kill. This leaves the uh, close spawn open. So Ant gets a close spawn and, and gets an opportunity to break through low. What we've seen since Major 4 leading into champs, they are just so good at making sure you never have a chance to put together a break. And Dante, Dante gets killed off time. He's probably like, how the fuck did I just die here? I thought we had left. The thing was, because Paco spawn kills Ken here, this technically blocks this spawn, but he's not blocking the close spawn. So Ant just is able to get through uh, low garage for free. And you see Skies here. He's he's holding this for a second. He doesn't see Ant, and then he tries to go uh, around to try and hold this, you know, side for for Dante on the hill. But he's just wait he's just way too late because as soon as he does this, Ant's already hitting hitting front of time. We start spawning coop side. We know they're spawning junk side. So this gives AG a route to try and pinch. Since AG's pinching, number six get a, gets a deeper spawn now. Wow. And wins a one-on-one on, one on, uh, on this time. There's another guy still staying here though, but he hides behind the door. Who is that? See, uh, Paco? Paco hides behind the door and and Ant doesn't see him. Ant just thinks he left. So Ant or sorry, AG wins one towards junk, but he just gets traded instantly by Paco. So big plays out of Paco. Like him hiding behind the door is so ratty, but it, it helps him out so much in that specific hold. And now they they still have you know. Control. Gets a look over towards Kismet at range, but like you said, needs an SMG to try to find a way to break this. For his teammates, still in control of this HP. There's only one player here. In this is a great route out of uh, Dante. So they're they're holding time. Number five has number eight's health. Number seven's gonna come over here and be able to watch, uh, like low garage as well with them, or watch anyone coming through mid cross. But what you know Dante does over here. Off the spawn, and you would see a lot of teams do this, a lot of players do this, just a heads up route. You take away the middle from anyone. So by spawning up diner and going this way rather than just you know flooding constantly this way, you're you're taking a route where you can cut off everything middle, so all your team has to worry about is coop. And you see a lot of players do that, but I just want to mention it because Dante does it here. So what this creates is it's a hard clear for Ant. Because he's expecting, okay, let's say, let's say he, you know, went this route and went up top, top red and covered middle from there. That's what Ant's looking at right now. But what he does, he gets a little bit of deeper spawn. So he can just go towards his mid cut over here. He doesn't even have to show himself. He can play like over here. Uh, actually, I don't know about 
how deep you can go because you can you still need to be able to watch the mid cut but uh what, what you're able to do is make sure that number two has to hard clear you and that's that's really awkward for them when they're coming off spawn like that but like you said so he gets a free kill on, on Ant. Now we have to play for him. AG gets the, you know, the trade. But this, you know, this trade is buying time for the rest of these guys to hold strong because it's only two people breaking while they have three bodies there. Five seconds. It doesn't look all that clean, so Kenny will just try to forfeit his life by jumping on into the mix, and he does move around the New York setup, but the kills are still good enough to allow New York to continue to get the scrap time. Plus, Skies did get the five, didn't earn the cruise missile though, so a decent shutdown for Optic. Now only 10 seconds remaining here at P3. So a lot of people like, would be like, I would see this a lot for some reason. You know, you're losing P3, just rotate the P4. But the thing was, a lot of teams did this too. You want this side of the map during the p4 so it's not like oh we're not rotating sure you could say that but like number five and number six are getting these out outward spawns and they're rotating here and you could be like oh optics not rotating to p4 but the preferred side would be you know these spawns so that you're spawning here for the p5 you get top three control if you get them killed out of hill they start spawning back alley and now you can like kind of kind of trap them have someone play over here make sure that you're just keeping them trapped in that location so this is not like, oh, we're not rotating the new hill. This is, we want this side of the map. Hitting old on P3 was fine. Because the subliners now have a couple players early off this rotation. Sip finds another one off the Shotzi, and it's, what, four hard points in a row? That the subliners have one rotation. Finds another one off the Shotzi, and it's, what, four? Have a couple players early This is a good pickup by Kiz. I don't know if he sound him or what or reason, but that's a that's a huge pickup on Ken. Ken would have had a, like a, at least one taking this route. Brandon three piece from top three. That's why you want top three, dude. It's so hard to soak time while you have top three. Now, like even though they rotated early, got to new early. They're not soaking time. They're spawning back alley. We have this control. Number one can play for this. Like, and we're just setting us up, up for the P5. Game. A moment where Optic are able to kind of at least neutralize some of the opening setup. But fighting for this time on the fourth hard point, very difficult to do. Gizman also trying to watch over the middle of the map as Optic try to find a way to envelop the entirety of the hard point. This is the, eye the, the only thing, like, this is what I hated about this P4. Like the new, quote unquote, new Karachi P4. It was just so hard to soak on time. Like, you'd have to use one of these little, you know, corner areas, but it was just so, it was so awkward. At the same time, play for a little bit of this hill time. It's still a 70 point difference. 25 still to fight for. You're going to go tooth and nail all the way to the very end, but Hydra even gets it done with the AR. Yeah, it's just been clean from start to finish here for New York. A full in 11 start for shots. Getting ahead on the P5 rotation. This is big out of Brandon. And Ken, obviously, Ken stays... Brandon's going to push out, take the timing to get pushed up as far as possible to make sure that, like, anyone coming front, we know that they're coming there before they just reach onto Hill. So we want to know where the pressure is coming from off of this P4 break. Are they going to be hitting Coop? Are they going to hit, like, mid? Are they going to hit front? What are they going to do? Hawker gets a kill there. So this is what kind of what I wanted to avoid. This is what I didn't care about, like... In Brandon's situation, he, I feel like he tries to do too much here. If he just holds strong on our, on our front, then like Ken doesn't have to worry about our front because Ken's not worrying about the front. He just knows we just died two guys over like outside. I just need to stay alive on hill. But if he, like if Brandon could have just played one in front, it, it was just a weird, awkward position for him because he thought like he would have to pick up sort of like top red and middle. Uh, because you know technically off off of this they can jump up top red or whatever but he needs to be able to cut off something gonna hit that early and then ant spawns out but a couple kills not going in their way That's gonna be two he's also gonna spawn out make. ken dies on the hill for free so this is a really blown situation from our part start for Shotzi. By far his slowest thus far on the weekend. Kenny also just at four and nine. So again, you're not getting the same kind of participation that you need to see if Optic are gonna put themselves in that major three champion. And also dies here without getting one. That's unfortunate. He he had Paco really one shot, but 
from his death, we know that three people are over here. But we still don't know where seven is. And he just runs straight through, through ticket. This is a big, big win by Brandon. So AG's in the back. He's going to try and disrupt something. But, you know, the, Skies knows that he's in the back. So he's cutting this completely all off. And, you know, AG just can't look at every every angle. Skies gets him. We get a kill top red. But Brandon wins this one off, old, or off of, uh, like, the time. And him getting this kill off of time is so massive. Because now they're not soaking time. We know one guy at least is in the back. I, we're assuming both of them are in the back. We can actually start soaking ourselves from front. Just gotta lead to a break now because the game's starting to get away from them. Subliners almost up. This is a good wrap by Paco. This is a very hard read. Just trying to set up on this pinch. Up by 100. You have a bunch of players from Optic contesting around this junkyard behind. Just trying to set up on this pinch. Yeah, Hydra will be able to scout out shots. He does. The game's starting to get away from them. Subliners almost up. Yeah, this is also a, a result of us spawning the fuck out and them just spawning close too. So they're just waiting on Paco to make a play or something. We can't really get on time because they're nading the fuck out of it and t it's tacking it. So we're just trying to stay alive, but we're eventually going to die from this pinch regardless. You have a bunch of players from Optic contesting around this junkyard behind just trying to set up on this pinch. Yeah, good spawns. You're just going to get to the hill faster too. What do you know? Dante refills the pinch as well. Refills his pinch, kills Brandon as he's trying to spawn up, run towards it. This is chalk now. 20 seconds. Goes to them. We have to set up for P1. And now we're down 100 points. So very, like, bad first rotation, obviously, for us. Because they were able to get a, four, a clean four down at the end of this, too, it's not like we're going into this P1 and top third area or like trying to tr control this area uncontested they know what the fuck we want to do so they're going to send two people there too they know we're not hitting this hole this is where optic need to find something to work with yeah it has to go from the p1 to p2 chain you have to try to dominate on this side of the map not die early off this rotation but really really good kills to, to bounce back here last one alive is dante and dies to him but now we can play for him we know that he's in our fountain Right now, Optic Texas in the hill. They need He's still being really annoying. Don't don't get me wrong, because that that I mean that's gonna allow kids to basically run up to this P1 to, for free. But Brandon has his help, so this is really good. But again, still Dante is still alive in our fountain. So we kind of we have to play like both fronts. You know, like Ant basically has to play for the the fountain guy. Jesus, what happened here? find a couple kills in the feed. Sib still calls. They need time. Leads to an early elimination over the top of and has to play the found guy while these two guys have to play spawners either coming through mid cutter or top third. The opening time at the first deal. Kenny also follows up from and gets found guy. We also get a kill towards P1. Now this is a lot more controlled and gets a two piece. Uh, so much more controlled. Now, what did I say before? You have your P1 control if you can chain it to the P2 by having a good setup going into the p2 you can stack points really like really stack points so having a good controlled p1 and end of p1 is is massive and she's going off now one guy actually does get through low coop really good read by ken to to read this i think he ends up dying but he he was at least looking at it i'm, su I'm surprised that this guy got through maybe he was prone or something I can't see it from Ken's point of view, but it looks like he's looking mid-cut. He must have been prone or something. Regardless, we do get the trades. So now, we have P1 control, but they're spawning junk here. So this is what ha would happen, you know, second rotation, whatever. You can get these close spawns to P2. Now it's big for us to pick up the left here, like... Brandon, since he's the, mo the leftmost person, 
should be watching the cross towards his P2. That's exactly what it is. He jumps out. Huge, massive pistol kill. AG also gets one. Last guy alive on the rotation. AG gets two. So this is, this is really heads up by both AG and Brandon to shift left here and get these kills. Both of them, both of them getting these kills creates such a hard situation for them because again, like we said before in that first rotation where we were in this opposite scenario, they're spawning deep. We're already having this ticket control. We can push up to the junk. We know no one's hitting old because we just got three down and you know, we're just looking for this last guy. He would have hit mid cut or he would have hit top third and we don't see him either. So we probably assume that he's somewhere around this area. And now we have rotation of the P2. We have initial positioning. We still don't know where this guy is though. Now we know. Paco, low fire. And still at this P1. So he's trying to get any information on where they could be trying to get this first initial break from. Brandon gets the Paco kill. So now we're, we're, we're super settled. We know basically everyone is just off spawn and we can just play off of that. They're going to be super deep. Nice play by AG here. We knew a lot of the times New York would like to take this deeper route to try and flank on in while everyone else like tries to pressure through the front side. So off of this old time, they get the ant kill. Kiz instantly goes to the balcony trying to, you know, do this dome pinch. Pred reads it. Now they're trying to break through top red here. Brand is in the day one corner. Uh, Skies actually kills AG here, but again, we just get information on where they're at and we can just flood towards time. That would have been a huge one for Brandon, but he doesn't get the kill. Now they're breaking from the front, but we're, we just have to, we have to play super tight. It's still a bad situation, honestly, for us. Uh, it was just too many deaths towards, you know, we died obviously plat because it was a trade kill. We knew uh, or they knew based on Kismet's death that he was going to be, you know, rotating towards the top plat. Brandon also dies without getting one uh, towards bottom ticket. Ant gets a huge nade kill, but again, it's just it's just Ken on time. So he needs to play off of his, his team. Massive. Fucking massive. Alright, so I'll break this down for you. 3v1. I'm assuming they don't know where Ken is. Do they know that there's two here? They, they have to know that there's two here. Because, like, Skies goes to obviously go spawn kill in case we got this back alley route and we're trying to, you know, jump over that, the hop wall. But we need to kill this Ken guy. If I'm my team, I'm like, we need to make sure L is fully cleared and we have time and then focus on anything later on. It feels like we're trying to do step two before we do step one. And like, obviously they don't know that Ken's here, but you just need to at least eliminate it. Actually, no, you do know he's here. He's on time. Never mind. He's on time. He's literally on time. We need to kill this guy first. Ken is, is priority number one. Because what this happened, what or what this allows is for AG to come that. off back alley here. He gets a kill on Kiz. They're in another gunfight with Dante. Ken could push off of the hill to get that kill. And now we have a, you know, basically a 2v1. Ken's on the hill. We know Skies is here. Now we can just, we just win this. It's a huge one. Massive. That's, this is a very big blunder on New York side, in my opinion. They should, they should be in a scenario where they're getting at least 30 seconds on this shit. A hundred percent. All three of these guys should just swarm back out or time. They should be hitting time, banging it. But again, it feels like we went for step two before we went for step one. Like Ken is number one, you have to kill him first. But we make the plays. This is, I mean, huge plays. I also love what Ant's doing here. Ant is taking a route to set us up for 
for P3. He knows the gunfights were going down towards P2. He realized we're getting kills. He's going to take this route. Actually, did he kill number eight too? Okay, it was, it was actually Brandy who killed number eight. But we get the kills towards Hill and obviously this guy towards middle. And can take this route to start trying to flip us while they're, you know, focused on banging this time to get us off of it. This is a really nice route to distract or capitalize off of the distraction, I should say. Because all of them just push straight through. We're actually winning, you know, old time now. Plus, we're setting us up for the P3. And we're still down 30 seconds. Again, if they held the P3, they're still staying ahead. They still have a hold to work with. This completely screws them now. Because that spawns number five out. This route by Ant, you know, Brandy gets a kill. He takes the free route mid. He's now junk over here. This spawns them out. He put himself in the right route. It's a 30 point game. Let's step aside and go to listen it with the green wall. And get, finally gets a kill after, you know, not seeing anyone because he took the route. Off Paco, we spawn P3 now. We're still holding old. So now, you know, based off Brandon's information, we know where they're going to be trying to break from. And it, we're assuming it's going to be Coop. So that's why we're, we're all shifting towards this, this left side here. Missing one on New Caesar, because he's obviously the first to have spawned up. So he's Coop. So this is obviously like a calm that not many players are able to do, but counting, not, not only counting, but counting uh, in order, if that makes sense. If you can relay to your teammates who is first in line for their team or who we need to be looking for first because he has the, the timing to do whatever based on the order of who, like, who died, because, you know, Caesar is the furthest push-up guaranteed 100% because he died first compared to everyone else. But we have our back left. We have, you know, we will have time. Ken's going to have our, our mid and, you know, garage push too. Actually, no, we don't have our mid. Well, we're calling it out. We know Kismet. But we don't know where he is, and he actually pushes up through mid as soon as Ken gives it up here. Yeah. He says square. He, he realizes it right after he gives it up that Kiz had hit square here. So that actually gets uh, AG killed, unfortunately. And it makes everything a lot, a lot more uh, uh, interesting <laughs> because they're holding time now. So Ant decides... Instead of hitting the guy square, because this guy square ended up going to time. Instead of hitting this guy, he's going to trust them to, to work with that. And he wants to push out top third, get this kill, and try and disrupt people. Uh, basically trying to reinforce the hill from that side. So he knows if he can be annoying towards you know, top third area or coop, this, it just allows everyone off of spine to, to work onto the hill. And like give them that space to work with. So you see that that's what Ken's saying. Try and live in it because he knows what Ant's trying to do. And if he can get top third and just be a nuisance here, that's that's massive. Great comet AG. I have a red pinch. He knows Ant is top third. These guys are going to be working towards time. We need to be able to pick up the red pinch. And that's exactly what Dante's going for here. So uh, AG reads this guy perfectly. He knows la last guy of spawn. Just be aware of, of our, our possible pinch here. Free kill. Ant gets another kill towards low garage. 3v1 on time. Bang this guy time. Kill him. Now we're good. 44 seconds. I want to talk about this comp too. So AG says this guy who just killed Ken, he's going to pinch top fire. Ken gives the calm. I will play for him. So they don't need to worry about this guy. He knows he's going to spawn deep and he's going to have to play for him. They need to be watching, you know, their coop side. They're sorry. They're yeah, their coop side. 
But really good play out of Ken. Or sorry, out of Paco for killing Ken here. He knows that this guy's spawning out. Ken just gets spawn killed once again. So that's really annoying out of Paco, but it was a good play. We just, I think in this scenario, we, we get broken because we just need to at least win one of these gunfights. Unfortunately, Paco plays for Ken here, and Ant doesn't get a kill on Kiz. But we need to win, like, one of these gunfights. This just, at a 4v2 on this P3 hold, they're coming from everywhere. It's just, it's way too hard to hold. So we just need to get one of those kills on one of those sides, honestly. But for being down 100 points... This is this is not bad at all. So we're gonna have AG be the one to hit towards uh, towards P4. Everyone else basically hits through old. So he's gonna try and play for those earlier routes that these guys take. Unfortunately, Kiz gets the the kill. So this is a good play by Kiz picking this up. But look at us. We're all hitting. We're all hitting old. We know that we want. Top third side. Optic does exactly what they need to get themselves back in the game. So since we've gotten sort of, you know, this old P3, these guys off of spawn, they can start making roaming plays either through back alley or through or sorry, long or through uh through fountain. Cause there's no I mean at this point there's no reason you spawn diner to wrap all the way around here. Like you might you gotta take what, what you can get at that point. But just as soon as you start to build momentum, New York find their break and they get Hydra. And you're still you're still focused on these spawns. Like you're still getting these spawns anyway. Back over to the store front. So now if you are Optic Texas, you got to get them. Or I guess you're, you're getting the, the diner spawns because they're blocking it. Yeah, but you're not spawning back alley. That's that's the big thing. You're just not spawning back alley. And at the same time, hold down the power positions. But you see the kill feed. It's all white. Subline is fine. Three in a row. They still do not have the spawns that they want. But you do have players like Sid trying to Really big kill. We know we're missing one. I think it was Dante. Yeah, we know we're, we're missing Dante top third. We get the kill on Kiz here. We're still looking for him. Look at Ken. Look at Brandon. They're, they're trying to look for him. He actually hits out through towards P1 and we get the kill. So now we basically know that we've had, we have control of these spawns now. Now I just focus that on them not getting time and again it's still not easy. If you don't win those kills or if you don't win those gunfights when you're top third or they have like too many people there because we had died and we're spawning a little bit deeper. It, it can be it can be annoying to play against but at the, at the at, jesus i just stuttered so hard at the end of the day you know we're down 40 points we're not going to be able to take the lead on p4 we need to just hold p5 that's guaranteed number one that's that, that's what you have to do so at this point we're just sending three people new because that's that's our only that's our win con we need to win p5 there's no way we break on in through the p4 and don't spawn out and you know there's too many risks of, at that point for them to to get to p5 while we're hitting old so at this moment just focus on new try and hold full 60. Gifted with that final time, and this is where Optic Texas yep. last time again. AG pushing up because he knows we have someone on time. We need to see if we can create space towards the front side. He gets a kill. That's huge. He tries to get away with his life. He does. We'll have to survive through cruise missile. Keep your eyes on high. Now we're just gonna double the hill. Ken gets a, a a nice kill off old, so he knows that they're not coming old. We have Ann who's watching middle. He doesn't see anything middle, so we know that they're basically coming front ticket and, and red. Just comes down to if the rest of the team feels the same way, and yeah, tablet goes up, cruise missile comes down in place for it. Just comes down to if the rest of the team feels the same way. I think they think they're they're missing someone here. Keep in mind they also will have to survive through the place for it. That must have been the comment. That's that's why down to if the rest of the team That's why Ann's looking back here, just in case. But cruise missile comes in. Massive cruise missile. This is a deciding factor of the game. And you'll see what happens here. So AG's on time. Brandon is at the back huts here. They go for the guy in time because what they're trying to do is 
obviously have the cruise guy kill the guy in time and then you focus anyone off of time to make sure that they can't get it unfortunately though they already kill ag so this cruise missile is useless because they try and slam it on ag but he's already dead so this just opens it up for brandon that's that's the real big thing here i think if this cruise goes to brandon we just we just lose the game in my opinion or at least it'll be really 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 hard for us to come back compared to how we did and obviously brandon here he stays alive back hut, back huts and he gets an absolutely insane three piece gets the first kill reads kids going to the side gets dante at the top back here massive i mean massive three piece I was so, so fucking clutch. Again, it probably has to do with the cruise missile not killing him. If the cruise missile ends up killing him, it's a completely different story. But he makes the play. Obviously, he does the Tydra, but we just trade him out right away. Four down for them. They're spawning super deep. Now, what do you know? We, we get on time. Again, we're, we're creating space. We're taking space away from them. So any subsequent push out of them uh, it is really, really, really difficult compared to them just hitting through front time or something. This is kind of what I was talking about with layering the map uh, the other day. But you layer the map, you get pushed up here, and now they have to, you know, kill number three and kill number two before they even get to the hill. If that makes sense. They hold on to that first push. Still 30 seconds to fight for. If you are optic, you have Kismet trying to set up... Look at them. They're all, like, looking for arrows towards red, knowing that they're going to be pushed up here. I, it's it kind of troll that they end up getting a kill on time anyways, but we do a good job to, to actually, you know, work these trades. And honestly, they, they should be dying before they get to red, but I think we were shooting them. We didn't end up getting the full kills. But we, we end up getting the trades anyway because they play close to the hill. So it's, it's still good. I want to talk about this too. Since they hit the back here, this actually spawns as diner. So because we spawn diner, Ken is able to take this founder out, and he actually is able to play for any parallel spawners over here. And this is really funny because this is, I mean, this is huge going into the P1. Well, we're spawning diner instead of spawning back P3. But they just don't have any power positions. You already have players like Sip contesting for top three. Ken dies on on new. But AG gets the instant trade. We know that they got those parallels and are trying to break from the street. So we have people looking for it. And is also, once again, taking the fountain route. They have to be worried about this. He gets a kill on Kiz. Gets a free kill on, on Paco. Two piece. He gets on the hill. That's all because we're spawning Diner here. And all because of the end of that P5. We spawn Diner. It's easier floods this way rather than trying to flood this way when they're top third. Because you have that instant access to the fountain route. Like Ant just told Now we, th I think they think that they spawned out here. They don't think that they're still getting these parallels, but they actually do. Or at least, I don't, I don't know if AG does. Ken at least stuns the low fountain just in case. But I, I think AG thinks that they spawned out here. But now we can play for it. We know that they, they spawn parallel. But again, but look at how, I mean, the diner thing, because you know, Ken had spawned diner and all these guys spawned diner, they're still able to stay alive fountain. And that's what makes it so difficult for them, even though they have a quote unquote, you know, good spawn here because they're getting these parallels diner. That's what makes it so awkward for them rather than us spawning P3. But now we start spawning P3, but we're holding the hill. So again, this is still a good 30 seconds, but it doesn't win us. It doesn't win us new. It doesn't win us the game, I should say. Still good though for New York. Scrap time looking favorable for Optic. Fred working on a long route. Able to catch up. Big read by AG. We know that Paco is towards this left side, so we know that we need to kill him before we start getting progressed up the map. We can make sure we have some sanity. We know everyone's going to be in front of us. We're still holding time, and now we can try and get set up to do some type of P2 break. So we don't have any positioning useless or junk we don't have anything you know low ticket at this moment we're just going to try and break together through you know short and through the back here at this moment we can get an opening we get opening we get an opening on, on dante huge first blood because now we know not only is plat open for us but we can watch over this guy 
possibly you know soaking time over here we know there's at least one guy watching uh fire and we we know at least one guy is probably watching the full pinch so by getting that first opening we can start breaking through the middle of this setup kismet gets a huge kill on ken but what do you know and is already pushed into into this you know p2 break kiz can only watch so much and he can only get one kill. So Ant is able to get through. He gets to the back door. Gets his kill on, on time. Brandy gets another kill on uh, on the Kismet trade. 3v1. On the hill. We know he's, he hits time. He knows he, we're, he's back L. Kenny gets the kill off of spawn. Jumping off the, off the, the hop wall. Three guys playing all around time. We only need seven seconds. We should just focus, you know, front bus. This actually is a massive trade. You know, this guy, uh, who is it? Dante? Dante jumps out of top fire, kills Ken. But the instant trade from, from AG's there. They just don't have enough time to hit the hill. Huge comeback. 100 plus point comeback on Karachi. I told you. That second P1 resets everything if you can hold it well and going into that P2. And, you know, honestly, I think they screwed up during that P2, plus the, the route that Ant was able to take to flip things out, and the guys able to get those kills off of the old P2, chain us kind of into that P3, and then obviously P5, that's where it comes all the way down to. Uh, Brandon getting the three-piece, and then us chaining that into the P1 with the, with the diner, like, parallel spawns. So, honestly, really, really good comeback. That's a... That's a huge map, I mean.